Well, I'm going to try to do something a little different. I'm going to do something a little different today. But I'm going to go back to Ephesians for just a minute. And I want to, I want to start off where Jimmy left off about how many enjoyed that. Our sufficiency is in Christ. The enemy is defeated. Period. And I want to pick up with this verse, in, and I'm just going to pick up in 13 of chapter 6, and it says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. Everybody say armor. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, stand. And in verse 14, it says this. Stand, therefore, having girded, having girded your waist with truth, and put on the bread of and put on the bread and put on the breastplate of righteousness, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, with which you were able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take a helmet and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Mm. And praying always with prayer and supplications, the spirit being watchful to this end. And it goes on. But how many have heard, we've talked about the armor of God before. And, and I'm, I'm going to break some of that down in the next few weeks. But today I want to talk about truth for a minute. But, but before we back up to truth, did we, we read in there, we didn't read, but it talks about that we wrestle. It talks about everybody heard of the deceitfulness of the devil, the wiles of the devil. You know, it says don't fight the devil. It says resist the devil and fight the fight of faith. The fight of faith is to have undiluted confidence that I am who Jesus says I am. And what's been accomplished has been accomplished for me with no strings attached. And as you begin to, is, but what I've discovered or what I've really, uh, what I say discovered is when I said about feeling, how many here got feelings and emotions? And, and I'm not picking on that, but I want to talk a little bit about that today because sometimes we, as Christians in Christian camps or Christian circles, sometimes we're taught, we're, we not, we're taught to deny those feelings or we're taught to make everything spiritual, which I believe spirituality is very important because it affects all the other things. That we do, but I watch a lot of times. How many people? How many times? How many people tried to bury their feelings? You know, they just tell you, "Make a bridge, get over it." Wham, 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 or build a bridge, build a bridge, get over it. Something like that. You ever done that? Let me ask you: Does that help? Just make a bridge and get over it. And well, don't shout me down. And today, for a moment, I want to talk. Go back all the way to the Garden of Eden. Who was did the, the devil came and tempted Adam and Eve? And tell them things like, made them doubt themselves and question, did God really say this? Did God really do the tree of good knowledge and evil? We talk about that. But all along, when the enemy comes, he's been defeated. But that doesn't mean he doesn't try to come in and to deceive us and to convince us that he's not defeated. And by convincing that, he tries to convince us maybe through feelings or through hurt or through pain. And the, and the word I want to talk a little bit about today is rejection. How many of you here have ever had pain of rejection? And we've, we've talked about this on uh, in our, in our, in our classes here in the last few weeks and visited. And, and I've really watched a lot of people with their feelings and emotions have to work through the pain of rejection. But yet it says, put on the belt of truth. And let me ask you this. If it, how many are that? I want to give you this thought. We should want to acquire everything about this armor that's been given to us in Jesus. Learn every detail of it. You know, when you get a car, or you get something, you learn, you get a phone, you try to learn every detail of it. But I'm amazed, I'm amazed because you got truth, righteousness, peace, you got, you got, you got faith, you got salvation, you got the spirit, you got all of these things. But all of it hinges on the foundation of the truth. And the Bible says over and over in Ephesians that Jesus is the truth. Ephesians 4.21, Jesus is the truth. Uh, John 14.6, I, I think it says that, that uh, Jesus says, I am th the way. He didn't say a way. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Think about that. I am the way, not a way. I'm not a truth. I am the truth. And then I am the life. Think of those three words. He, that gives us every, that helps us. That sh, and a lot of times with, with rejection, what happens when rejection comes in? We can't see the way. We really, our truth is distorted, and we really don't know much about life. Do we not? 
We get all, so we go around all the time. But I learned this. This amazed me, that the pain of rejection, the emotional pain and feeling of rejection, the same brain neurological road or highway, the same, the same road that that travels on is the same road that physical pain travels on. Ever had physical pain? So sometimes when people have felt rejected, those feelings, emotion, there's a real hurt there. You process it the same way. You process hurt and pain the same way. And I find a lot of times with rejection, and how many here in this world, the world, especially here, where the people are filled with rejection. If they don't get enough likes on social medias or enough follows, enough likes, so then other people have been rejected. They try to buy cars and try to, try to buy clothes and they try to have you know, businesses and different things to be approved. But there's a big difference between being approved and being accepted. We try to do things to be approved. And one of the things I think of the wiles of the tricks of the, of the enemy is he tries to deceive us into believing that we are not lovable and we are not acceptable. And he goes out, and what happens if that, if that happens, will you believe that you're righteous? And I call righteousness the, bullet, the, breast, the bulletproof vest that covers your heart. That no matter what he throws at you, you know that you know that you know that I've been put in right standing through Jesus Christ. And then after that, that brings the gospel of peace. Man, I can walk in this peace. Not just looking for it, I get to walk in it. And one of the things I learned about peace, walking, you know, slaves never got shoes. But it reads here, you got some shoes. What is this? Only, only sons and daughters got shoes. So what I'm saying is you got shoes, anointed, gifted shoes to walk this out. As a son and a daughter. Isn't that amazing truth? But I find a lot of times in our journey with what I would call with the pain of rejection or rejection, it produces things that a lot of us deal with. And I'm just going to throw a few of them out there and, and, if, and see where, that, where it goes with. But I believe the Holy Spirit's going to take you from a wounded place today to a healing place today. From a wounded place to a healing place. And, and Lord, help me to, to unpack this as you'd have me to do it in Jesus' name. Rejection. Let's look in the Bible for a minute. Was David rejected? David was rejected to the day that the prophet came to anoint one of the sons as kings. His dad doesn't even, doesn't even think he was worth his time to bring in the lineup with the rest of his sons. Think about that for a minute. Was he rejected? But yet we see lots of the, in the book of Psalms where he sits down and just processes we can read a lot, of, a lot of the things of the Psalms that he wrote. He sat in process, which became a form of worship to him with him and God. And, and, he, and he writes all kinds of things. And, but he was rejected. He was despised. He was kicked. I mean, he was put down in every way and rejected. Think of that. Think of, who, who was another guy in the Bible? How about, how about Joseph? Did his brothers reject him? Well, that was a good time. I'd like to have your brothers hanging out with your brothers and they reject them, reject you enough that they go back and tell your dad, take his fancy coat of many colors and cover it in blood and tell the dad that, that he's dead and sold him into slavery. Sold him, got rid of him. Well, that's a loving family. We'd have some counseling over that one, would we? Wouldn't that be a messed up deal? It'd be a messed up deal. And then the, the biggest one of all, who was, who was, it says in John chapter 1, uh, he came to his own, and his own did not receive him. What's another word? They didn't accept him. Or let's put it this way. We're not going to identify with this guy because he's not what we thought he was supposed to. This isn't what we thought it was supposed to look like. Ever been like that? I'm not going to identify with some of this stuff because that's not what I thought it was supposed to look like. So what did they do? They didn't receive re He came to his own, and his own did what? They rejected him. Thank God he didn't reject us and to the point where he was betrayed. He was denied by those that were closest to him. Is it, and I'm just throwing it out there that we see rejection in places of the Bible, do we not? And, and, I, and as I throw it out to you, you don't need to raise your hand, you know. But the, that, that pain of rejection produces in a lot of people, especially Christians, because they struggle, with, they struggle because they try to do all kinds of things to be approved, and they miss out on the truth and the reality that they've already been accepted in Jesus Christ. So they set out to prove that they're worthy, that they're good enough. That, and what happens all along, they're fighting, they're, they're fighting thoughts like, what's wrong with me? Or they're fighting thoughts like, uh, or they're being deceived that I'm just not lovable. I'm just damaged goods. I'm just damaged. I'm just damaged. I'm not good enough. 
That's a big one. I was somewhere the other day, and one of the, one of the conversations I had between, between a couple was she was so thankful for the relationship that she, that she was with and her husband because she didn't have to pretend to be anything that she wasn't, that she felt good. Here's it is. She felt good and comfortable in her own skin. She felt good and comfortable in her own skin and that she was enough. That's powerful. Would that not mess with your emotions? Would that not mess with your feelings? I'm not here, I'm not here trying to tell you, because a lot of times we've been taught to deny those things. We're here to, and, and when, insecurity, it's, it's, when insecurity comes, what does it do? Insecurity becomes toxic in our world. Insecurity produces things like self-doubt. Well, that's a fun one. How many here like self-doubt? Oh, don't shout me. Self-insecurity wants others to look bad so you'll look good. Or insecurity will be like, man, I'm really, I'm really glad you're here today. We're all, woo! And then on the end, well, I wish they would quit coming. Do, do, do you see what I'm saying? On the outside, we want to give great approval and great things. But on the inside, we're really privately not really, privately we reject or, or, we're, or we're not really, are you following me? We put on a show on the outside, but on the inside, we're blah, 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 blah. And then we get, and I think when you become insecure in our journey, you become very critical of everything else. You begin to see things and to believe things that aren't there. And then you think every conversation and every gesture and emotion, you got you to gotta figure out what does that mean. They looked at me funny. Or, or they didn't say hi to me. They walked right by me. And then what happens, they start process. They rejected me. I'm not good enough. They didn't shake my hand. They didn't say, say oh, am I the only one that's been that way? I get a lot of people, you didn't shake my hand today, church today, pastor. You must not like me. I walked right by. You didn't even see me. And if I've done that, I apologize. But I'm not, I'm not rejecting you or hiding from you. Maybe I'm having a conversation or maybe I'm headed somewhere or something. It's not to be, not to be rude or mean, but I watch a lot of times when there's insecurity, you'll think things and believe things that aren't true. So how do you, so, so, in, so in a sense, is truth important in our journey as believers? The truth that you know will set you free. That truth, so, so as we go on into Ephesians, Paul starts off with, Telling you the enemy's, enemy's going to come out and try to deceive you and to stand you. And when we started in the beginning of Ephesians, he tells you to sit down and take a rest. And then we get to the end of Ephesians. And then in the middle of Ephesians, he tells you, now that you're sitting, let's begin to walk this out. And now at the end of Ephesians, you're walking it out. Now, as you're learning to walk this out, let's stand in what we know. And then when you don't know what to do, keep standing in what you know. And when you don't know what to do, keep standing in what you know. Because when you stand in the truth that I am, that he will never, ever, ever reject me because he was bruised and beaten, he was rejected and despised so that I could be accepted. So that I could be accepted. And when he went to the cross, any former type of rejection went with him. He took all that rejection in any form, emotional, spiritual, physical, whatever you want to do, he took it all to the cross and delivered and redeemed you and me from those things. He redeemed you and me from the power, the power of, uh, what I call it, the power of deception, of rejection. Amen? But how many times when we talk about insecurity, what other, what, insecurity can, uh, man, it's a mean thing. It's a deceiving thing. It makes you feel lower in a snake's belly. It brings you down. Uh, I'm not a good enough dad. I'm not a good enough mom. I'm not a good enough this. So what we set out to do is, here's the difference. Here's the difference. We set out to look for approval, but we miss out on the reality of Christ that we're accepted. Now, I'm not against approval, but how many people here, maybe your childhood, I'm not here to pick on that, but, but we don't allow our, I'm, I'm going to go back to what I did. When we, how many here buried some pain and rejection? Raise your hand. Don't, don't be shy. I'll raise mine. And what we end up doing, what happens when you put a seed in the ground? What happens when you plant something in the ground? What's it to do? It grows. So if we bury those seeds in the ground, metaphorically, well, they, they can grow into bitterness. They can grow into hatefulness. They can grow into self, a low self-esteem, self-worth, or, or an identity that you're not good enough. And then you live your life 
with that reality, trying to appease and to please and to do, and you think if it's the right car, the right house, the right, the right location, the right marriage, the right message, uh, the, right, the right attitude, the right everything, then I'll be, then, then they'll love me. But let me ask you, is there much life? Is that a way, the truth, and the life? That's not a life to be lived. But how many people have done that? through that hurt or pain, of, they buried it so long that it shows up in different places in their life. That toxicity shows up in different places of their life. And, and when I say insecurity, there's a difference between having some insecurities and insecurity having you. There's di- some differences in being insecure on some things and insecurity having you. Make sense? Security can, if, if, if security, if insecurity has you, it will rob you of your thoughts. It will rob you of your emotions. It will rob you of all kinds of things. And if we, if you look at Mark eleven twenty eight 28 that I read, that I read and quote all the time, uh, maybe I can get them to put it up there because there's a word up there I wanna, that I want to highlight, um, the word soul. So I'm going to, Shauna, can you put that up there for me? I mean, like that ocean. That's a, can anybody read that? I always look at that like, how am I going to see that? It says, and they said to him, they said to him by the authority, do, 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 who gave, is it, do, do, go to the next verse. That's Ma- I need Matthew, not Mark. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew and Mark. I probably have it wrote down as Mark. I've done that before. Put Matthew up there. Thank you, Jesus. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you, everybody say that word. Rest. Let's start off with the verse. Says, what does it do? It says, come to who? Come to him, and I will give. If you're, let's say, if you're tired and worn out, and I will give you what? Rest. Now let's read the next verse. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and I will give. Let's, listen to this one. And, I will, and you will find rest for your souls. Everybody say souls. Rest for your soul. Everybody say emotion. How many here? How many here? They were they were tired and wore out. You think they were they think they were tired and worn out from trying to do everything right? Tired and wore out and trying to hold the line. Tired and worn out and trying to 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 fight all of this stuff and to do all this do all these things and to fight and look for approval. I'm just you could take that wherever you want to take it. But but I want to see here is one of the things that Jesus is telling everybody here is it is that if you are weary and tired. And looking for approval, let's take a break. You want real rest? Watch how I do it. Let me teach you. Let me teach you and show you to embrace, the, to embrace and let healing flow into the soulish areas of your life. Let there be healing in your emotions. Let there be healing. Let there be healing in, in your feelings. And, and don't allow insecurity, don't allow the enemy to rob you of, of the good things that the Lord has in store for you. Amen? Amen, and, and, and I'm, I'm gonna back up and just go over some things and, and tell you this this morning. Rejection is not the end. Rejection, if you feel rejection, if you look at David, you look at Joseph, you look at Jesus, was, was rejection the end? No, rejection was a redirection in a different, in a different way of doing life. What was bad got turned around. Think, what Jesus, what Jesus was rejected so that you and I could be redeemed. He was rejected so that you and I can be accepted. And then it says, I love this, and I keep saying it all the time, in, Coloss- in, in, in uh, Corinthians it says, he, we've all been, we are all ministers and been given the ministry of reconciliation. Everybody say reconciliation. And recon- this, is the accept- this is the translation. It, the ministry of, of reconciliation that we declare to people is accept God's acceptance of you. In Jesus, accept his acceptance of you. Do you see? He identifies and he identifies with your rejection so that you could have life more abundantly. He took that rejection so that you and I can be free from that from that insecurity and that toxic self-doubt that tries to that tries to tell you that you're not enough or that you're that you're damaged goods. And 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 I think everybody here in this room could say two two things that you've at times you think that you're unlovable. And you're, unex- and you're and people don't accept you or love you. Oh, don't shout me down on this one. I mean, don't raise your hand when I'm unlovable. But, but how many know when, when this happens, 
The belt of truth, think about it. If we take off the belt of truth, the whole armor falls off. If you take off the belt of truth, it falls off. Here, here a while back, I was out at Bill's, and I went hunting at his place one morning. He had just some stray dog that wouldn't leave me alone. But before I got to the dog, I didn't know. I got there about 5 in the morning, and I got these pants, they're camo pants, and I forgot my belt. And this is just a story I just thought I was doing. But my problem was I had my bow here, I had my stuff, and I would hold my pants. I was holding them, and I'm walking through the woods like this. Nothing wrong with that. And as I was walking up the road, I heard this, and I had this little light on, and I could see these eyes in the weeds. And I thought it was a mountain lion, or because it didn't sound like it. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm like, I'm trying to hold my pants, and I, and I go to walk, and my pants fall down to my, below my butt cheeks because I grabbed this, and, and I don't have a belt. And, and I turned, and I'm walking backwards, and I'm hitting the lights, and there's tall grass. And I'm thinking, man, it's a mountain lion. It's, it's something. I already gave you away what it was. So as this growl, next thing, the weeds start moving. So I got my bow, and I'm like, boy, I'm very unprepared for this moment. Me, big white hunter. And I remember as this is happening, I remember my pants, and I finally, it started coming through the weeds, and I remember letting go of my pants, and I remember going, running is not an option today. <laughs> so, so I grabbed my bow like a, like a ball bat, and whatever it is, you, me and whatever it is, we're, we're going to have a come to meet in Jesus. And I'm, and I'm one of them guys in the woods. I'm not like, I'm not like uh, you know, me big man, come fight, come fight the enemy. I mean, I'm like, ah! I'm screaming in there trying to, trying to do all this stuff, and I grab my bow, and I'm ready to swing it. Out comes this little black Labrador dog. Comes out there, and my heart's pitter-pattering. And, my, and again, my pants are falling down. So my point was, even though I had the camo, I had my hunting gear, I had everything, but because I lost my belt, I couldn't function properly and move around. And then when some discord thing happened, I was more in freak-out mode than I was in any other mode. Because I couldn't get, you ever tried it? I couldn't move and jive like I was supposed to. And I mean to tell you, when I stopped, I had no idea what was coming through the weeds. It could have been a bear for all I, I was convinced it was some of those things, you know, because I never heard a dog sound like, it did not sound like a dog. And then for every time I'd go out there, that dog's like, we're buddies now. And he wanted to follow me around everywhere. Mess, I'd go to my tree stand, I'd sneak away, and I'd go, and he'd come and lay down under the tree stand. So I'm like, the hunting experience is just going to be between me and the dog today because nothing else is going to come around. And I did see some deer way off, but the dog would later, he'd look up, and he'd follow me back and forth. And, but anyhow, but, but, but I remember that being helpless, being helpless at that moment because, because all I had, if I would have just, just made sure the belt was in the bag when I got there to, to get dressed, it would have changed the whole way I navigated. Because you've got to remember, I had to climb the stand too. So imagine me trying to, so I'd let them fall down and keep going. I'd get a little ways and pull them back up. And, and I even tried some weeds and some stuff to try to pull, try to, I was looking for anything to try to keep them up. And finally, finally I just thought, the next time I went, I said, if I don't have a belt, I'm not going out again because that was worthless, a worthless experience that I don't want to relive again and do that. So are you tracking with me? So what, part what I want, I'm doing it a little different because I want you to see the power of truth will affect every area of life and how you do life. And it's truth, it's the truth that you know that sets you free. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. It says in John that Jesus, Jesus came with grace and truth. How many, what is the truth? You're loved. You are loved. What is the truth? You are accepted. What is the truth? You are what God says you are. What is the truth? You don't have to let insecurity be what navigates your life. What is, what is the truth? Truth is that, that, he, that you have been perfected in Christ Jesus. A lot of you are trying to get perfect and not realize you've been made perfect. So trying to get to that and learn to have an attitude, I'm going to learn to understand what it means to walk out of this perfectness. It says in Hebrews that he was the one offering so that we could be perfected. That's a big one. And I think a lot of times when we get a hold of that truth and under that understanding and that hinge, it will change how we do life. And when the healing of, and, and it'll allow the woundedness of rejection or approval or any of that stuff, it'll allow you, because what happens when you, usually we're not trying to get approval from God all the time, we're trying to get it from people around us. And what happens when we try to do that, it wears us out. 
it wears us out. And then we start, and we don't get it. I think this, you ever heard of affirmation? Affirmation is to, the Bible says in Titus, affirm constantly. Uh, Peter says, I'm going to keep reminding you this over and over again, that God is for you, that God is not against you, that, 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 that he's got great and good things in store for you. When he looks at you, he sees his glory all over you. He sees glorious things in you. He sees you as victorious, and, 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 and he sees you as one who's, a, who's triumphant in all areas of life. But that little thing of insecurity and hurt feelings messes the whole journey up. It makes, you hear a little, Rawr, and next thing you know, you're running. You're running, trying to pull your pants up. And then it comes a point where you're just done fighting, and it says, come to me. You're tired and worn out on doing this, and I'll give you some rest for your soul. Think about your soul. He didn't just say your physical body. I'll give you rest for the internal, the internal part of your journey, your feelings and emotions. I will give you rest in those things. Come to me and you will find a rest. You will find a rest. And, and I'm, I'm tongue-tied with it because, because what I happen to see so many times is when, when, you, when you miss out and be manipulated by the truth, it allows you to get caught up with all the other stuff. How many, here, how many can tell you that, let me ask you, well, when you're rejected, who usually takes you in? Others who've been rejected. And then what happens with others who've been rejected, we just try to be, live in all our rejectionisms and try to control one another or be part of that journey. And we're helping anybody today. But here's one of the other ones that when I talk about affirmation, I got sidetracked. Affirmation is good, is it not? I tell people all the time, you need to affirm who God says you are. You need to affirm. And I would say things, are you quick and bright, sharp, quick and bright, sharp and quick and bright, yeah. Quick and bright. I got Somebody tell it to me. Healthy, wealthy, and wise. You're quick, you're sharp, you're bright, healthy, wealthy, and wise. Gifted, anointed, and talented. Are those good affirmations? I am who God says I am. He's for me. He's not against me. I'm, I am likable. I am lovable. Uh, and we can go on with all of those things and begin to have affirmation. But what I find a lot of times in people's journeys of all walks of life is they become codependent on being affirmed versus knowing they are affirmed. Think of the difference. We become codependent. We got to be around everybody that we got to be, make sure that they affirm us. We're the rock star. And if we don't get enough of the rock starisms with affirmations, what happens is, well, them people, I don't like them people. We don't, I don't like them people. You know, they don't, we, and we want to get all wrapped up into our, into our accomplishments and our, look at my car, look at my this, and look at my this, look at it. And you're wanting affirmation, you become, co think about this, this is slow down, think of it. But you become codependent and having to have people affirm you in order to feel valued and worth and worthy or loved or liked. And, you, and, you, and people get caught up. I'm all for affirmations. But when affirmation has you and you're so dependent that you can't function unless somebody's giving you some, oh, praise you, holla, praise you. And, and we're just getting that rock star treatment. Then if anybody treats us any less, we don't have time for them. We don't have time for them. And usually when that person's being treated that way, then they're the one that just wants to have the whole thing. You can show up and they're not going to talk anything about what's going on. They just want to talk about them. They just want to talk about them, all them, 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 because they need that constant affirmation to feel that they're even worthy or liked or loved. But yet they miss, and what does it do? It robs you from having a healthy, healthy relationship. It robs you from a connection of relationship because all your relationship is based on how they see you or how they affirm you. And if you're not affirmed, we don't have time for them. If you're not affirmed, you're going to go find somebody. And I, I believe you need to be around people that celebrate you and love you. There's a difference. But if your addiction or toxicity and insecurity comes from or a place of approval comes from people telling you how good you are all the time, you're going to be one of the most unhealthy people in relationships in life. People will show up and talk to you, but they're just going to, all they're going to do is listen and move on because they, all, you, all they know is you're, they're not going to get a word in edgewise because all they're going to do is talk about them. And their accomplishments, and I'm not against that, and they think it's a spiritual thing, but what it does is there's an unhealthy relationship because there's no connection because you're desiring to have that codependent affirmation. So is there a difference? There's a healthy affirmation 
that you are affirmed. God, God, when God comes in through the Holy Spirit and says, you're affirmed, you're accepted, you're loved. What, is he, what does Ephesians 1 say? You're accepted in the beloved. What a, if you go and read my Bible in Ephesians 1, 2, and 3, I have got it taped and taped and retaped and worn out because I've read it over and over so many times because every time I read it, it's life-changing. It tells you you're holy, you're blameless, you're accepted in the beloved, you've been redeemed. Oh, and by the way, you've been forgiven. And you begin to read these things, those are the affirmations, those are the affirmations that change the journey and how we do life. Oh, and by the way, you're seated with him in heavenly places. Oh, don't you were dead, but now you're alive. Oh, and, and also you're part of the family, part of the commonwealth. Oh, he starts to go on, and then one of the one things I love about Paul is he says, and I pray, my heart's desire is that you have a full understanding of all of this in your life. In such a way that insecurity and the toxicity of those things don't have a voice and don't have a place. Amen? What time is it? We doing all right? I didn't even get started. Codependent. You like that one? Oh, don't shout me down. I wrote this down too. I wrote all kinds of things down. I won't get to all of them. I'll give you some of them. I wrote down when you crave codependency. You're super, you're, you become obsessed with approval and validation. You're to be constantly affirmed. And then what happens, this is a fu fun one, you become easily offended. Who? Ever been offended? You become easily offended. You become unstable in relationships. You become lost. You become isolated. You become, you, become, you become wounded. You become hurt. You become tired. You become restless. Hence, all the definitions of, of, be, of, of insecurity and, and, and the pain of rejection. Wow. But here's some good news. You, God wants to take you from a wounded place to a healing place. Here's some good news of the belt of truth. Rejection is not the end. Here's some good news. The truth is God has already accepted you in Christ Jesus. The truth is you're loved beyond measure. The truth is, when you begin to believe this truth, watch this, it gives you super abundant, supernatural strength, identity, security, confidence, and assurance. And when it, how many here like confidence? How many like assurance? How many can say when, you have, when you've been given confidence and assurance, does it change how you do things? Does it, what's it do with the toxicity in your life? Let me ask you this. I, I just thought of this when I was talking. When we, when we try to maintain insecurity, are we living up here in our lives or are we living down here? Where are we usually living? We're usually living down here. You feel lower in the snake's belly. And what I find out, most people, when they get that way, they just try to maintain everything from down here. And you ever heard of the story in the woman in the Bible when she was walking with the, she was bent over? She was bent over and all she could do is look down. What was she seeing? She was seeing the earth, the dirt, the, the natural things of life had her down. Let's say it this way. Her emotions and the things, she wasn't standing tall like everybody else. So there was, maybe there was a, she felt rejected or not good enough. So she's, she's walking all, she's walking down like this. And then Jesus comes along, touches her, changes her, and she's able to stand up and see things completely different. And when you begin to see things completely different, you're like, I don't have to maintain this lower than a snake's belly identity anymore. I don't have to maintain and try to just hold it. I'm just trying to hold it together. To the Lord. I, you know, and this is usually what happens with people. I just can't wait for the Lord to return. It's going to be any moment now. It's going to be any moment now. I know it is. The signs of the times. And they're so wrapped up with an escapisms that they miss out, they miss out on embracing the way, the truth, and the life today. They're either, they're either living in the past pain or they're projected forward so far. Nobody. And what happens is they miss out on being present with the way, the truth. They miss out on being present. Miss out on being present and, and, and tell I don't, have to, I don't have to live lost anymore. I don't have to live. I've been given an identity in Christ Jesus, and it's amazing. He's accepted me just for me. And here's the best part. You didn't get approved, then get accepted. You were accepted, and when you got accepted, you see all the things that you've been approved in. When you show up, he says, you're approved with all the inheritance and gifts of heaven. Not when you get there, but right now. All of heaven is tilted in your favor right now. 
Let it be here. Let it be here as it is there. Let it be in my life right now as it is in heaven. You've heard me say that a lot of times. You're going through a lot of H double L. Bring some heaven in it. Bring some heaven in it. Let heaven show up and invade that darkness. Let heaven show up and invade that insecurity. And you can stand up and you can declare and you can decree that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And what, and what really we're doing is you're attacking the mindset that manipulates those emotions and feelings and it turns them around. You can, you can, you can say, nope, I'm going to have healthy feelings. I'm going to have healthy emotions and I'm not going to let these wounds dictate how I do the journey and navigate the trajectory of my life. Now what I'm going to begin to do is walk with an uprightness with the, and declare what he says over me. And I'm not just going to declare it and make it sound good, but I'm going to begin to receive receive it and walk in it because it says back in John, those who received him, he gave them the power and the right to be sons and daughters. So receiving is if I'm going to, I'm going to accept what he has accepted and declared over me. I'm going to accept his acceptance. And as I receive that, think about that. My favorite verses, let's just say that, just say, I accept his acceptance of me. You ready? <laughs> Say with me, I accept his acceptance of me. Let's say this, I'm accepted in Christ. Now I'll close with this. Are you accepted in Christ? Now I'll close with this. This is the big one. You need to learn to accept you. You. One of the biggest tricks in this insecurity is more than all the things we say is self-rejection. That's a big one. Self-rejection, I don't know how you want to define it, but it's, a, it's one of the worst things on the planet because it'll rob you of your, of the, of the, it'll rob you of every other journey. It will keep you wounded, keep you hurt, keep you down, keep you looking at the ground so long that all you can see, all you can see is the dust on the bottom of your toes. And when you begin to, when you, be, when you do that, what it does is, does it rob your eyesight to see and to believe that you're accepted in him? So self-rejection, is that a big one? So as we leave here today, some of the things, does, do, are you accepted in Christ? And you, do you accept you? What I'm, what I'm saying is we need to get out of that emotional cave, that emotional feeling that says keep out. Because usually when we go into, when we have self-rejection, we go into what I call the pain protection program. We try to protect all of our pain and isolate ourselves and live in a cave. And when we live in the cave, let me tell you, when David was in the cave, remember he was running from Saul? He was rejected. He was king. He's being rejected. He's hiding in a, he's hiding in a cave with a whole bunch of guys. And, he, and, and this is the cool part. This is how God works things out. He's in a cave that overlooks where he conquered Goliath. Could you imagine feeling rejected? And then when he goes to, he goes to one of the, he goes to the priest or the prophet, he goes somewhere and they're looking for some food and they ask him if he's got any weapons. And guess what weapon is there? Goliath's sword. It's pretty cool how all that works out. And it never says that he uses Goliath's sword. And any of the, we don't see it or don't, I'm not saying, it, but, but think about him feeling rejected and on the run and nobody loves me and unimproved and God's anointing me as king and everything in my life is not going so good. And he comes to that place where he sees that sword. And he's in that cave overlooking where he defeated Goliath. Can you see where things begin to start to change? And then in that, he had the opportunity to take out Saul, not once, not twice. He even honored that spot as God's anointing. He kept it. He didn't try to go out. And he had all kinds of people saying, just go take him out, take him out, take him out. But he didn't. Because he was, he was wanting to be led with his heart. And he wanted to, and he, and if you look all through the Psalms, a man that was rejected, turned away even by his own dad and his family and Joe's, all of them. You look at how they changed the trajectory that we read about today. All of the, a lot of the Psalms is Dave talking about the creating me a clean heart. He talks about the things that we get to experience now. He said, man, it's going to be, that's, you know, that salvation that you're going to give is going to be something great. He talks about all kinds of things. Oh, it's beautiful. Does he say, I think, does he say I'm fearfully and wonderfully made? You know, before you, before you knew me, or before you, I was formed, you knew me, before all that stuff he goes on, I think it's Psalms 139. All of Peyton is a picture is when he began to sit and reflect and slow down and begin to concentrate and believe in some truths, it changed how he navigated his life. 
What happens if he lived in the form of, if he stayed in rejection all the time? What if he found peace? If you live in rejection all the time and insecurity, it's hard for you to embrace that you're the righteousness of God. It's hard for you to say, I'm going I'm to walk this out in peace. It's hard to say when we put the helmet of salvation, you're always doubting your salvation. Always doubting if he's loved, loved because your feelings and emotions are going crazy and toxic. And then what happens is when the Holy Spirit comes along and goes to pray, you're like, I don't even know what that is anymore. And then we spend all our time doing things simply, as we, simply this, two things. The Bible says you're accepted in Christ. You accept you. Hebrews 10, 14 says you have been perfected in Christ Jesus. Not going to be that you are. And then my favorite verse, you hear me talk about all the time, one of my favorites is that you are God's handiwork. You are God's masterpiece. Those are some things I just want to throw at you as some truths today because as you begin to let them be your, not be your truth, but be the truth, it hinges, it holds all the rest. As you acquire into every detail of this armor, truth, truth, it's, it's the concrete cornerstone foundation that holds everything up, how everything else operates in your life. And what does the enemy try to do? What does the world try to do? They try to rob you and steal and deceive you and not believing the truth. They want, to, they want to distort it. And one of the things, like I said, you ever been insecure? As you leave here today, I'm just going to try to encourage you and empower you. Because, see, the, the gospel, the ministry and the message of the gospel, is that it's not just for today, but it should be something that empowers you as you leave here every day of your life. It's not just here. I love singing and I love talking and telling you stories and I love, I, I'm not too sure about the Chargers, but I, I'm, I'm glad that you love them. So I accept you. Doesn't mean I approve everything that he does in the Chargers, but I accept, I accept him. I'm just picking. But, but as we leave here today and as we leave this place, let's leave here going, feelings and emotions are good. Because God created us that way, and I'm going to learn how to appropriate them in my life, and I'm not going to let the deceptiveness of the enemy of the world try to rob me. And I want to do it 11, 20. I'm going to come to him, I'm going to rest, and he's going to refresh my soul. Give me rest for my souls. Let's stand to our feet this morning, or I'm going to keep preaching. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Whew. Father, I just, if you're here this morning and you just keep your eyes closed, but that's something you connected with today, I just want you to raise your hand. If you ever felt rejected or not enough, I'm not going to, you know, the power of that insecure, whatever, I'm just, there it is. Just keep your hand for, up for, this, for this morning. I'm going to raise mine too. Father, you know these hands. You know the blueprints, you know the ins and outs, the ups and downs. And Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters. I pray, Father, it says you came with grace and truth. Romans 5, 17 says those... <laughs> who receive those who receive your grace and righteousness will rule and reign in life. And Father, I pray this morning as we leave here that we can all declare that I'm going to say I'm I'm going to say what God says about me that I'm accepted in Christ. That I accept me, that he is for me, and I'm going to stop demanding and trying to prove. I'm not going to keep, I'm going to stop exhausting myself and criticizing myself and complaining. But I'm going to start to learn how to receive and learn to walk in this amazing grace and truth of being redeemed and forgiven and accepted. And I'm going to begin to enjoy and embrace life, renewing my mind to what he says about me. That I am not a victim, but I am a victor. I'm not under, but I am over. I am, I, even when I'm sleeping, it says he causes good things to come my way. I am a son and a daughter of the Most High. I identify how he identifies with me as holy and just and righteous and loved and liked and worthy and accepted and anointed and gifted and talented. And I'm going to learn to walk in this with confidence and assurance, not just in one area, but in all areas of my life. Empowered because he is my sufficiency. Father, I just thank you and praise you for your presence and your power in each and everybody's lives. And as we conclude here today in Jesus' name, I just ask everybody one more time, just to say this with me, I am accepted in Christ. I accept his acceptance of me in the beloved, over the top, son and daughter of the Most High. 
all of heaven tilted in my direction every day of my life. In Jesus' name, give the Lord glory and praise this morning, church. Give him glory and praise this morning. Hallelujah. 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 And everybody said, Amen. Amen.